The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Sporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Hope you're all well. Please don't forget to drop a like on the stream. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of all the new content that we add to the channel as and when it pops up. Just wanted to get my take out there on the latest transfer rumours that are out there. So obviously the news came out yesterday that it looks like there is a deal in place provisionally. Obviously, all the T's have got to be crossed, dot I's have got to be dotted. For the Bayern Munich and Morocco player, um, right back, left back, centre back, he, he seems to be a bit of a versatile player. I'm not quite sure what his default position is, but uh, Masrawi, Mas, I don't know how he's pronounced, Nuasir Masrawi, we'll, we'll go with Maz, it's probably easier. And... Yeah, I mean, he's, he's come in. The, the fee's been agreed. I think it's there or thereabouts 15 million euros coming in from Bayern Munich. He was previously at Ajax. He's actually born in the Netherlands, but he's obviously representing Morocco. Played at the World Cup in Qatar in 2022. And obviously they made a, a very creditable run all the way to the semi-finals. So he's played at a pretty high level, obviously, you know, got to a semi-final in a World Cup, played for Ajax, played for Bayern Munich. So he's got Champions League experience, all the rest of it. And I think we it's a fairly well-established fact that we need to have a bit of competition for Vladimir Kufal. Indeed, it may even be that this isn't just competition for Vladimir Kufal. It's actually essentially his replacement. Uh, as I say, he can play in other positions. He can cover at left back if needed. He's actually six foot tall, so I'm led to understand that he can also play at centre back. So he's got a number of strings to his bow. This is where I get a little bit, little bit squeaky bum though. Is that if you look at his injury record, I think I read, if I remember correctly, what I read was he's had 16 separate injuries since about 2021 which I look at and go, hmm. But then I sort of look at the fact that in the last two seasons in the Bundesliga and in terms of the, the physical demands that it places on a player, it's fairly comparable to the Premier League, I believe. And he's played 29 Bundesliga games in each of the last two seasons. So he's not missed a huge amount of games. Now, how many of those games were down to injury, how many of those games were down to just not being selected, you know, because you're playing at one of the elite European clubs, Bayern Munich, what, five times European champions, multi-time Bundesliga champions, FC Hollywood as, as uh, they're known. So, you know, there could be reasons a, a, around him not playing that not necessarily are all tied in with him being injured. But as I say, my information is that he he is does have something of a checkered injury record. So that's the thing that kind of concerns me is, you know, is this going to be another one of those players that we take a little bit of a chance on thinking that, you know, it'll all be fine. And then he picks up an injury and he's out for, you know, a, a prolonged period of time, like a Jack Wilshire. I mean, that's, that's the most recent example that I can give of a player of that sort of 
with that sort of reputation, with that sort of baggage that's attached to them. But I don't know. I mean, look, you know, he's like I say, he's he's played at a fair level. He's from what I can make out, a, a guy that is a very offensive player, you know, and his his crossing ability is decent enough. However, I do also hear that his his defending is also maybe a little bit suspect. And maybe I'm a little bit old school and I'm of the opinion that, you know, if you're playing as a fullback, you are a defender and you need to be able to defend first, attack second not the other way around. But I guess that the modern fullback is is basically where the width comes from nowadays because a lot of what I would call wingers aren't actually wingers. They're inverted forwards because you have this thing now in the modern game where you put a left footer on the right and you put a right footer in the left. So their natural tendency is obviously to cut inside and get shots away. So your width in the modern game is actually provided by the fullbacks bombing on. So I, I don't know. Could work out well, could be a bit of a risk, though. There is a bit of a bit of an element of jeopardy with this one, so we need to see how it plays out. The other one, obviously, is John Duran. Now, John Duran, obviously, is a, a centre-forward currently playing his trade with Aston Villa, but I think he's burnt his bridges with them, it would appear. I don't really see that there's any way back. It's very reminiscent of times that we've had to go through a similar thing, you know, the likes of Dimitri Payet, the likes of Marko Arnautovic, where a player just basically downs tools and says that he doesn't want to get involved in sort of, you know, getting, you know, in and amongst it. So it it looks like, you know, the beneficiaries of that could well be us. Now, the latest news, as, as the nose broke yesterday, as I record this, that it looks like there may well be a deal in place uh, for £30 million plus an unnamed youth player. Now, whether we're right or whether we're wrong, people have put two and two together. And the conclusion is, is that that youth player is none other than Lewis Orford. Lewis Orford, the captain of England's under-18s, a player that a lot of people that have watched the youth team play, and I'm one of them, has an awful lot of promise and aspirations of how he's going to progress into the first team. Um, The current situation with Lewis Orford in terms of his contractual situation with the club is concerned is that he has, as things stand at the moment, one more season left to run off his current deal. And obviously that then creates the issue that, well, if he doesn't sign a new deal, then we're probably going to have to move him on because he's not really going to fetch that much in the way of value. But then in in truth, for for a kid that's not made his first team debut yet, he's probably not going to fetch that much as it is really. So I'm not quite sure even why he's been included in this deal. It's a bit of a strange one. But just, you know, why don't you just sort of like maybe get him to put pen to paper and maybe either involve him in the first team or if you think it's still too soon for him, maybe loan him out to a championship club or something. But to include him in this deal, I think, is is quite strange. It really doesn't make sense to me. In actual fact, I'm really against it. I I would prefer to see him being given some sort of opportunity in and around the first team. And I'm not talking in pre-season friendlies necessarily, although that's great. But seeing if you can weave him into any of the, the Premier League games, the, the Carabao Cup games, things like that, and see if he can take his opportunity. If he doesn't take his opportunity, then fine, not a problem. But He's not even been given that opportunity in a meaningful game. So, you know, he's he's got to have something about him. He's the captain of England under-18s. He's not just a, a ballpark player at that level. He is the cream of the crop. He is the guy with the armband. He's the figurehead. So I, this is a this seems to me to be a strange move. And it's also being made on, on, on a guy that is showing in, in his departure from Villa, which is pretty much assured now, I'm sure, even if he doesn't come to us, but he's, he's showing a very questionable morality. You know, do we honestly think that if he comes to West Ham, whether he goes in part exchange with Lewis Orford or not, do we honestly think that somewhere down the track, he's not going to do the same with us? You know, you look at players like Marco Arnautovic. We were obviously the beneficiaries when he came to us of him downing his tools at Stoke, making it very no, very well known and established that he didn't want to to play for the for the Potteries team any longer 
And we was obviously the beneficiaries. And that's all very well and good. And he came in, he did a good job, blah, blah, blah. But then when the time came that he wanted to, to sort of find pastures new, then it was a bit of a problem. These things, you know, what goes around comes around, guys. If, you know, if he's going to do that to Villa, he will do it to us. It's pretty, it's pretty assured that this is something that we need to be very mindful of. So it's all very well us turning around and sort of saying, ah, ah, brilliant. We've, we've managed to sort of get a player that's, that's not wanted at Villa. He's caused a little bit of a rumpus there, but we've got a, a player and it's all good. Do you know what? Be careful. Be very, very careful what you wish for. Um, and also, as I say, it depends upon what angle you look at it. He's got a goal every 111 games, oh, sorry, 111 minutes, excuse me, bloody hell, a striker with a goal every 111 games, that's not quite a striker. He's got a goal every 111 minutes of Premier League football. That looked pretty impressive. Five goals in 35 matches in Premier League football doesn't quite look so impressive, but you have to factor in the fact that a lot of those have been from the bench, I believe. He's only actually had of those 35 matches, I think it's three starts, I, I'm led to believe. So you need to sort of drill a little bit deeper. You know, you don't just look at five in 35 and make a snap judgment. I think he's he's in potentially a decent decent player, decent prospect. But as I say, his his temperament does concern me. So they're, they're basically the two stories that are out there. The main ones, obviously, John Duran from Villa. Part exchange, 30 million plus a youth player, unnamed by, by sources. It's believed to be under 18s England captain Lewis Orford. And obviously the situation with Nusa Mazrawi. If again, I may well have pronounced the name incorrectly, but there you go. We'll call him Maz. Utility player, utility defender, left back, right back, centre back. Probably could also move into defensive mid, I suppose. If he can play at centre-back, then he can probably move forward a couple of yards. So he's a very versatile player, but he does like an injury. But if any of you guys have got any thoughts on either of these two, then please get them involved in the comment section below. And please don't forget to drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here, hit the bell icon so you know of any of the new content. Tell your friends, let them know who we are, share, it, share the channel URL with them, and we'll see you next time, guys. Stay safe. Come on, you irons.